One day, all the crabs disappeared. People searched in the seas, oceans, lakes, rivers, rainforests. Not a single live crab, only old shells. Crabs shed or molt several times during their life. Their body keeps growing, but their shell doesn't. So they throw off their old suit and hide. They sit there in silence until their new one grows. But why did every single crab molt on the same day? Where are they hiding? Six months later, Sweet, says an old fisherman, and pulls on his fishing rod. He's out on his boat, catching fish in the Atlantic. The rod hasn't moved for an hour, but now it's latched onto something big. The fisherman pulls the rod with all his strength. Then the joy on his face turns to fear. A giant crab claw shoots out of the water and snips the fishing line. A second claw appears and crushes the boat in half with one pinch. Just then, a cargo ship sails by and scares the monster away. Some sailors pull the fisherman on deck, and he looks down overboard. A huge crab the size of a car is swimming around. Its claw shoots out again and grubs onto the ship's metal hull. The screeching of metal is insane. The captain signals full speed ahead, and with a jolt, the crab's colossal claw comes loose. The ship sails to the shore on a low and mysterious tide. There's a strange vibration on shore. The sand begins to sink in on itself and form funnels. Humongous crabs crawl out. There are hundreds, thousands of them, and they're all heading for the water. Panic strikes, and people scream and run inland. While they flee, some people video the madness. It goes viral. But they're not alone. People everywhere are coming face-to-face with these monsters. No one knows what's going on. Crabs dig burrows when they molt. Deep down in the sand, they're protected from predators and bad weather. This time, something weird happened. They hid way deeper than ever before, so they had more time to grow. For six months, they've been sitting and waiting for their new shell to grow. Now they're out, and they only want one thing – food. Most crabs eat fish, alive and not, snails, and even other crabs – anything that gets in their way. They love fights and are naturally aggressive. But now that they're massive, small shell fish and algae are just not enough. A big fish would be delicious, but they can't catch them because crabs don't swim well. But on land, they move pretty quickly. The big fish are safe, but what about the rest of us? One day later, thousands of eyes come out of the water, like a thousand submarine periscopes. Crabs have excellent vision, and they can spot a potential meal from far away. Their eyes can distinguish between houses and moving objects, cars, and people. Thousands of pairs of sharp, snapping claws emerge from the water and head for the city. There's chaos on the street. Crabs are running around, cutting down electric poles, overturning cars, and smashing glass. Everyone rushes off the street and heads for a narrow alley. A crab cuts off their escape, It eyes its prey, but it looks like the alley's too narrow. The people are safe. Not. (laughs) The crab turns sideways and squeezes into the alley. It's hungry, and it starts snapping its claws. They're blocked in on all sides. The crabs are everywhere. The only way is up. People scramble up the fire escape to the roof. The crabs try to follow, but everything they grab onto, trees, even the metal fire escape, crushes under their enormous weight. The crabs are left looking up, hungry. Up on the roof, people watch as crabs destroy their city. Humans hunker down in their homes, but that doesn't stop the crabs. They break down doors and walls. Everyone gathers on the roofs, looking up to the sky for help. Helicopters finally arrive and evacuate the city. Huge crabs bring huge problems to Christmas Island. It's in the waters between Indonesia and Australia. The islanders pack their bags, drive to the pier, and leave the island. They're pretty scared, but also a bit confused. Once the last human's gone, the island gets quiet. But there still aren't any crabs. What's going on? The sky is overcast, and it starts to rain heavily. As soon as the first drop hits the ground, A tiny vibration shoots across the land. The rainforest in the middle of the island starts to change shape. Trees fall and the earth shakes. 
But this is not an earthquake. It's worse. Giant red crabs poke their heads out. Not hundreds, not thousands, but tens of millions. These crabs migrate every year from the rainforest to the coast of the Indian Ocean to breed. Even at normal size, the crabs cover the roads. They look like a long red river. The migration lasts about three weeks. But now that these crabs are so big, they cover almost half the island. They demolish trees, cars, houses, everything in their path. Then, just like that, they disappear into the Indian Ocean. The deeper you go, the creepier they get. You're about to travel to the darkest ocean depths and check whether this claim is true. Are the creatures living there as scary as people think? You go 120 feet down underwater. Pay close attention to the bottom under your flippers. Oh my, what's that terrifying face half hidden in the sand? That's the Northern Stargazer. You can meet this fish in the eastern United States. It buries itself in the sand until unsuspecting prey gets near. Then, the nightmarish creature electrically shocks the poor animal and dines on it. You are moving deeper, to 240 feet under the surface. That's where you spot a colorful, puffy creature, no more than one foot long. It's the sarcastic fringe head. At first, the fish seems to be harmless. Ha! Ah, only unless it's provoked. When this animal is agitated, it opens its huge, huge mouth to fend off predators. This defense tactic is a sight to behold, both surprising and frightening. Luckily, the fish is no threat to people whatsoever. The creature you see next can comfortably live in shallow waters, but you meet it at a depth of 900 feet. You don't even need to wonder why the animal's called the Game of Thrones Brittle Star. Unlike starfish that slowly crawl across the seabed, this creature moves fast. It wriggles its long, flexible arms to get from point A to point B. Its body is protected by a hard calcium carbonate shell. Also called snake stars, these creatures are tiny and easily fit in nooks, cracks, and small crevices in rocks. At a much greater depth of 2,000 feet, you come across the giant squid. For a long time, it was thought to be a creature from legends rather than a real animal. The giant squid was first caught on camera in 2001, and it's exactly as big as its name implies. The creature's eyeballs are the size of soccer balls, and the squid itself can weigh up to 600 pounds. Almost 3,000 feet below the surface, you get spooked by another creepy-looking animal. It's somewhat red and rather small, no longer than one foot long. As you approach the creature, it looks rather docile, or maybe just indifferent. The vampire squid, that's the animal's name, looks like an umbrella with tentacles. It doesn't even produce ink, so you leave it alone. Soon after that, at a depth of 3,200 feet, you meet the cookie cutter shark. This creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to big fishes, dolphins, whales, and sometimes even people. Then, using its neatly arranged serrated teeth, it gouges out cookie-sized pieces of meat. This nasty glowing animal doesn't grow larger than 20 inches and lives in the ocean twilight zone. At a depth of 3,300 feet, the light becomes a rare and valuable thing. The animals living that far away from the surface have to evolve unusual features to survive. That's how the barrel eye fish ended up with a transparent head and two super sensitive barrel shaped eyes. Right now, pretty much like always, they're pointed upward allowing the fish to see potential prey, and you. Almost 4,000 feet below the surface, you see something droopy and saggy. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or any muscle. Its jelly-like flesh lets the creature survive incredible water pressure. Despite its appearance, the blobfish is an ambush predator. It usually lies very still on the bottom, waiting for unsuspecting prey to swim by. You go a bit deeper and spot a creature that looks particularly ghastly. The goblin shark senses prey with its snout. The creature's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. When some animal comes too close, the shark catapults its mouth forward to catch it. If your mouth could do the same, 
you would be able to eat things dangling seven inches away from your face. Even deeper than that, at 5,000 feet, you notice another member of the shark family. The frilled shark looks like an overgrown eel, but its gills are lined with red fringe at the edges, hence the name. The creature's horrifying mouth has 25 rows of razor-sharp backward-facing teeth, 300 in total. The shark prefers to hover in the water, waiting for its prey to come closer. Then, it charges at it like a snake. Suddenly, you see something glow brightly like an electric bulb. But after coming closer, you recoil in horror. The creature looks like an upgraded eel equipped with oversized teeth. That's the deep sea dragonfish that can live at a depth of 6,000 feet. Chemical processes going on inside the fish's body produce an eerie red glow. This glow is used to communicate with other fish. Okay, this is how it starts. You're woken up by a strange sound. Not the alarm, though. It's 5 a.m. After a few seconds, you realize the strange sound is a knock on the window. But you live on the 12th floor. Who or what could be knocking? Window cleaners? You live in an ordinary apartment building, not a skyscraper with offices. The knocking is getting stronger. You muster up the courage and go to the window, reach for the curtain, and abruptly pull it aside. What you see is fantastic! (gasps) There are flying or floating small fish outside your window. Thousands of them. A shoal of sardines rising directly to the sky. A few knock on your window as they pass. There are so many sardines, you can't see what's going on outside. But as the last fish flies by, the full picture opens before you. Large and small fish fly between the houses. Octopuses cut through the air with their tentacles into a rain cloud. A huge whale is slowly drifting toward the horizon. Above the roof of a nearby house, two sharks chase four sea lions. A neighbor waves to you. He holds a fishing rod from the window and waits for the fish to bite. A school, no, a flock of dolphins flies past your window. They cheerfully whistle as if they're greeting you. What's going on? You turn on the TV. All the channels are playing the same thing. Sea creatures of the Earth have learned to fly, leaving the ocean and filling the air. All flights worldwide are canceled, and fishing vessels are idle in the seas, oceans, lakes, and rivers. And no one knows what happened. Well, you get dressed and go outside. Sea turtles crawl on the ground. They shiver, flap their fins, and rise into the air. A flock of shrimp flies past you. Has the ocean lost its gravity? What happened to all the water? You live in a port town close to the sea, so you decide to go to the coast. You reach the shore and see the water is calm. Gravity seems to be intact, but the sea creatures continue to take to the air. Six months later, people gradually get used to the new natural phenomenon. Fish occupy most of the sky. Some sea creatures penetrate the middle layers of the atmosphere. Smaller birds have almost disappeared since the presence of predatory fish in the sky. But birds of prey that hunt fish gained weight. They've eaten so much that they can't fly anymore. Plump gulls, albatrosses, pelicans, and eagles can hardly walk and barely support themselves. Planes stopped flying and ship travel increased. The world's ecosystem is completely changing. The ocean becomes lifeless. The number of bacteria, microbes, and various nutrients in the water move to the air. People get sick more often, and in some areas, it becomes difficult to breathe. When it rains, millions of shrimp and small fish fall to the ground along with the water. Many predatory mammals that have been feeding on fish begin to starve. They go out to the roads and cities to find food. Scientists research the flying creatures and find that they somehow change the structure of their lungs. But how fish got the ability to fly is still unknown. It seems nature just decided to push people out of their usual environment. Fishermen build balloons to fish in the sky. Some athletes throw a lasso at flying whales and ride them like huge horses. 
though the landing can be difficult. Creatures that previously swam only in the very depths of the ocean settle at high altitudes. Researchers discover new, previously unknown fish species. From the ocean depths, a giant octopus rose into the air. Many call it the kraken. This monster has found a new home right on top of Mount Everest. Now everyone is afraid to climb this mountain. The most deep water creatures reach space. On the ISS, astronauts observe amazing animals flying past. They look like aliens from other planets, not Earth. A shimmering portal closes behind your back. A smiley guide greets you. Hey, you're not the first person to travel between the worlds, but such a journey still remains something out of the ordinary. At first sight, the place is not that different from your own. The same people, the same transport, similar architecture. Hmm, then why did your friends swear it would be the trip of your life? Your travel agent told you the town you'd be visiting is at the seaside. That's why you ask your guide if you could spend some time near the ocean. He gives you a funny look, but agrees. The day's brilliant, sunny, and hot. It feels only natural to take your clothes off to get some sun. After a while, you get up to go have a swim in foamy waves. But your guide grabs your arm. His grip is unexpectedly strong, his face anxious. No, it was risky enough to come to the beach and stay so close to the water. And now you're going to take a chance with your life? Huh? That's all you can answer. There must be some misunderstanding. What's so dangerous about this beach? Rip currents? The guide suddenly calms down. Don't tell me you don't know why people from your world travel here. You shake your head, and the man starts to laugh. When he's done chuckling, he becomes serious and mutters, Okay. I'll show you something you won't be able to forget, ever. Let's go. You walk along the beach, keeping more than enough space between you and the water. What surprises and worries you the most is the eerie silence. The only sound you can hear is waves hitting the shore. No kids cheering, no surfers riding their boards, no fishers waiting for a good catch. Your guide slows down, and you see a small harbor. For some mysterious reason, it's separated from the open ocean by a thick metal fence with massive gates. You and your guide are heading for a large boat, or rather, a ship. Uh, just how many people are going to join us on this excursion, you ask. It's just the two of us and the crew, your guide replies. In our world, it's too dangerous to put to sea on a smaller vessel. And indeed, you notice no fishing boats or yachts nearby. You follow your guide downstairs and see a large cabin with a glass floor. Feel free to step on the glass, it's super thick and literally unbreakable. The ship starts vibrating and moves away from the shore. You're watching the rocky bottom, corals, and schools of colorful fish pass by. The water under the ship is getting darker. All of a sudden, your guide whispers, Here it is! The creature is enormous, longer than a semi-trailer and almost as long as the vessel you're on. Its body shape resembles that of the modern-day monitor lizard, but longer and more streamlined. This makes the animal more fitted for swimming. Its limbs are short, with webbing between fingers. It also has a wide tail with a broad, triangular plate on it. While swimming, the critter keeps its body stiff to reduce the drag through the water. The only thing that's moving is its mighty tail. As soon as you manage to get your voice under control, you scream, A dino! Nope, your guide doesn't agree. It's a mosasaur. They aren't dinosaurs. These creatures are reptiles. You must have their close relatives in your world, snakes and monitor lizards. The mosasaur you see is one of the largest species, which are quite rare. There are many kinds of these reptiles, and the smallest is a mere 3 feet long. The average length is 13 feet at the most. But big specimens still occur. That's why we have to build such large, sturdy ships. Just one tail swipe from this beast, and a smaller vessel would be broken in half. The mosasaur, you still find it hard to wrap your mind around it, is swimming under your boat for some time, and then swooshes up to the surface. Your guide answers the question in your eyes. 
Mosasaurs need air. That's why they regularly rise to get some. That's the reason they prefer shallow coastal waters. The creature returns. This time, you get a chance to see its jaws. Each is completed with two extra rows of triangular teeth. Behind them, you spot its tongue and… wait, is it really forked? All in all, the creature's mouth looks like one of a snake, including the teeth. They're also curved backward not to let prey slip away. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.